Today we're going to dive into the plumbing side of our Snow Performance Methanol Injection Kit, so stick around. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and today here on the bench we're going to take a look at all the different fittings that you need to be aware of whenever running the plumbing side of your Snow Performance Methanol Injection Kit. We're also going to touch on some of the optional ones and some of the things to look out for whenever using them. So let's go ahead and dive into it now. Before we do that though, I want to go ahead and give a big shout out to Nitrous Express and Snow Performance as always for sponsoring the garage. Make sure and check out the links down below and if you haven't subscribed already, click the subscribe button, ring that bell. We're going to be doing a multi-part series when we go through and tune our Snow Performance Methanol Injection Kit on the Super Auto with the Pro Charger F1.8. You don't want to miss it. We will touch on every aspect of properly tuning a methanol injection kit. Okay, there's a couple things to be aware of whenever doing the plumbing setup. And I kind of have everything laid out here, but we're going to start back at the tank side and move forward. We're using the two and a half gallon cell that's going to be mounted in the bed of the truck. Uh, if you're using just the factory one, uh, a lot of this is still going to apply. For one, we have our outlet on here. We need to be cognizant of where this outlet is on the vehicle. So whenever we're accelerating, we want the fluid to be pushed towards the outlet. So since we're going to mount this on the passenger side, just make sure that your outlet's at the back. On top of it, we have a level switch here that will give us an indication. You install this yourself, grab yourself your favorite drill bit or your favorite drill with a unibit on there, drill through there, and then it's a compression fitting. Just tighten it down, fill the thing up with water, verify that doesn't leak. The big thing is, is that we want the float to be up. So make sure that the orientation stays the same as you drill it in there. That way, whenever there's fluid in there, the float is in the up position. And then whenever the fluid gets low, it will close. And that's what sends our signal to our LED or our controller to let us know that we are low on fluid. Keep that in mind. You'll be able to tell the orientation based on the way that the um, uh, wrench fits on the back side of your fitting whenever you're doing it. Make sure that you wash this thing out, get all the plastic shavings out whenever you're done. And as I said, double check, make sure that we're not leaking out of that compression fitting. Don't over tighten that though. It's real easy to over tighten these things uh, and that'll just end up stripping the plastic threads on it and things like that. So just run it down fairly snug, check for leaks. After that, we're gonna be coming out of the tank with our hose, whether it's braided or the uh, nylon tubing style, and we're gonna go up to the pump. Before we get to the pump though, since we're running a remote tank, we're gonna have a solenoid to cut that line off. It's suggested any time that you're running a tank from the rear to the front to use the solenoid to cut it off before it gets to the pump. If you're running the uh, tank up front right next to the pump, it's not as critical. That being said, there is an inlet and outlet, so be a, you know pay attention to the inlet and outlet of the pump, but we'll be coming in here from our tank, and then we go out into our pump unit and into the filtration system. This is an optional uh, unit, but I would highly suggest that you get a filter for your methanol system. And the best position is to do it on the inlet of the pump to make sure that you're not sucking bad crap through your pump. This one is, uh, you can break this unit down, clean it out so it's reusable. That's what's nice about it. And there are directional arrows that show you the inlet and outlet on your pump. Just keep that in mind whenever you're mounting this stuff. We're gonna go ahead and use a 90 degree into the filter. We'll have the solenoid mounted above it with the inlet coming in, nice clean down into the pump and then into the outlet. Now this is where it gets a little bit different. We're using a dual nozzle setup on there and because of that, we have to run a check valve. Uh, and it's just, honestly, it's a good idea to make sure that you're not siphoning. If you are running it behind uh, the throttle body into the intake manifold, you're going to have to run a solenoid also on this side of it because the vacuum will, well, technically, I guess this one would be good enough because you've got to cut it off, but you don't want it being able to try and suck down part of your system whenever you're running. The nice thing about the solenoid is this thing uh, has no polarity, so you've got two leads. One's going to go to ground. The other one, you're going to tie into the hot lead with your pump. That way, anytime your pump's commanded to open or run, the solenoid will automatically be commanded to open. But in this case, we're running the check valve before the T, then we T out into our injection nozzles. 
these injection nozzles, the design on it's great. You've got this body in here that uh, allows the filter, which goes on the inside of the injection nozzle, to be exposed completely to the flow of methanol. Uh, and then the jet just goes directly into your 1 8 27 MPT tap. So if you don't already have a 1 8 MPT 27 th uh, thread pitch tap, go ahead and get one of those. Uh, what I like to do on my intake tubing is just take the TIG welder or a spool gun if you can, if it's aluminum, and just build a puddle up that's you know decently thick so you can drill and tap through that puddle. It's a lot easier than trying to put the bungs on there. I've got some of the 1 8 MPT bungs. They are next to impossible to weld on to your intake tubing. So whenever we assemble all this stuff, anything that is not going into a pipe or a hose like this, we want to make sure and use the supplied E6000 uh, sealant. So on any of these fittings, go ahead and use that sealant. Just on the first couple threads, maybe a quarter to halfway around, it will spread out as you tighten it down. This side, of course, is a flared fitting, so we do not need to have any kind of sealant on that stuff. So this will be what we run off the pump over to our intake. Everything's good there. Just be mindful of where your arrows are pointing for flow, things like that. It's on here somewhere. It's the last place you always look. Right there, there's an arrow. Make sure that you are not installing anything backwards whenever you get to the process of actually running everything. So pretty straightforward, but before I got to the point of installing all this into the truck, I wanted to go ahead and do a real quick breakdown of the different parts. And this is literally about every part that you could ever install on this thing. Thank you, Snow Performance, for that. But plan ahead, lay things out, kind of get your fittings ready to go. As I said, I've got all of my fittings uh, sealed and in my solenoid on my pump, and then all I have to do is mess with my hoses. If you're using the nylon push lock, it's even easier. You can put everything, kind of spec it out in place, install all the individual components, do the wiring, and then afterwards, just go in and tie all your hoses in. Don't get too carried away about over tightening things. A lot of these fittings, uh, you only need to basically finger tighten it and then go about a quarter turn with the wrench and that's gonna seal you up even under high boost applications. So don't over tighten things because it'll just give you problems down the road. And then we'll always look for leaks whenever we pressurize the system to make sure we don't have any leaks on any of our fittings everywhere. The other thing to keep in mind is we do have different size jets. I am running a number five on both of these, you do not necessarily have to do that. The uh, additional nozzle kit comes with a five and six. The kit that I got, the stage four, comes with a three and five, and that gets you uh, nitrous injection for the suggested range of 250, 300, all the way up to 500 horsepower. Running two uh, fives is probably good to the 700, 800 horsepower range. I might end up putting the six in, which would bring me around 1,000 cc total delivery, uh, a little bit more, maybe 1,100 cc total delivery. We're just going to go through, look at the tune, see what we need on the top side with the fueling. As I said, we are going to be diving into those specific uh, subjects later on in different videos as this series progresses. So make sure and subscribe, follow along, ask any questions that you may have down in the comments. Uh, I'll try and answer them as good as I can. If you have any questions on top of it, feel free to call Snow Performance, Nitrous Express. These guys know this stuff inside and out. They're more than welcome to help uh, answer those questions, get you set up with the uh, proper uh, water methanol injection kit for your setup. They make them for everything. A lot of this stuff is universal, but they can also give you guidance whether or not you're doing it on a diesel, doing it on a four-cylinder turbocharged car, you know, what, what size nozzles or jets that you need to be using. So that information is out there. Just don't be afraid to ask. Okay, so we've got our plumbing done and installed on the truck. As you can see, I went ahead and decided to go with the passenger side front. I've got a nice hinge that closes up over this. I just have to open it up on that side. Not a big ordeal since we've got a two and a half gallon tank. We shouldn't have to fill this thing too often. Uh, made sure and put the pickup to the rear of the truck or vehicle. That way, whenever we're accelerating, the fluid will go down there. And then I mounted my uh, float switch, well, kind of in the middle, uh, as you saw earlier. Uh, honestly, that should give me more than enough notification whenever I'm getting low, even whenever I'm under acceleration. Uh, if I'm below half a tank, it'll start letting me know. You want to keep this thing fairly full. I like to fill it up whenever I get back down to half a tank. Went through, uh, went ahead, I use self-tapping screws. 
uh, some nice two inch long ones to get through my bed rug here instead of using the bolts or kind of a pain to run bolts through here it's not going anywhere uh, came out of here 90 out the back went down through the bed put a grommet in there and then you can't really see it but i've also got the wires ran through the grommet right there in a wire loom and then we're just in uh, with some clamps down the uh, top of the rail all the way up to the front of the truck. Let's go look at that now. Okay, hopefully you can see what I'm talking about. Just basically how we specced it out on the bench over there. I've got my nozzles installed coming down to my T, comes down from my pump outlet. And then on the inlet side, I've got the filter uh, that comes up to the solenoid that actually shuts off the line from the trunk. And that's because uh, all the line is lower and in fact the uh, tank is also lower but they suggest that anytime you run the tank in the rear go ahead have the solenoid uh, before the pump and this will be wired up along with the pump lead so whenever the pump is active the solenoid will be open all that's good we had some excess uh, tubing eventually we will get some uh, fittings that we can cut these down to the proper length for the vehicle to kind of clean up the installation. But until then, I've got everything nice and zip tied up out of the way. Uh, I did have to go in on the pump itself and build a couple of aluminum uh, standoffs uh, because the battery tray has a big hole in it. Basically, I just bridged that hole uh, so I could easily mount the pump down in there. Plenty of room all around it. Everything's looking good. Now comes the hard part. We've got to dive into the electrical uh, as frustrating as this stuff is just to get everything kind of routed right uh, it's actually the easier part but the electrical will have to run some electrical figure out what all that we need what all we have to tie into for this system uh, so that's going to be probably in the next video or two so if you have not already subscribed go ahead and do that now if you got any questions hit up the comments down below make sure and check out the links uh, you know big shout out to snow performance as always to uh, for supporting the channel on this build I'm so excited to get this thing out running getting boost applied to it, having the methanol, went and picked up uh, 10 gallons of straight methanol so we can uh, dilute our own. So, man, this is going to be awesome. You don't want to miss it. Thanks for stopping by the garage, ABT. Always be tuning.